Good morning. It's Sunday the 2nd of August. Welcome to our time of worship here at Christchurch Chislehurst, both online and in the church building. It's the middle of the summer holidays and many of you may be away, but we hope that at some point you're able to catch up with this service or perhaps you're watching it while you're away. May God give you travelling, safety and mercy over the summer period. And for those of you at home, we pray blessing on you as well. This, this online service will be continuing for many weeks to come so that everybody can access it. But if you are able to come to the church building and you would like to, uh, we're opening at 10 o'clock and showing the service there. On Sunday the 9th of August, that's next Sunday, and on the 30th of August and on the 6th of September, you'll be able to come to the church at 9.30 a.m. for communion. So if you'd like to do that, you would be very welcome. Now this morning we're starting a new sermon series on the book of Nehemiah from the Old Testament. It's all about rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem and it's quite an adventure story. I think it's quite relevant at the moment as we think about the rebuilding of our community as we come out of the lockdown period with many challenges ahead. And I hope that you'll enjoy looking at the book of Nehemiah over the next few weeks with us. So let's pray together as we start our service. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have been with us through the uncertainty and the challenges of the last four months. And we pray now, Lord God, that you will meet us in our time of worship. You will draw us together by your spirit. We are the body of Christ, whether we're meeting in a building or meeting online at home or anywhere else. And we pray we'll have a real sense of that this morning. We pray, Lord, that as we continue to face the uncertainty of the future, that we will trust you and that you will guide and lead us and give us your peace and your presence. So, Holy Spirit, guide and lead us in worship this morning, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. My Jesus. Good morning everybody. 
and a special hello to all the children and I really hope there's some of you out there this morning. So I'm wondering how many of you have been busy making things or building things at home? Uh, maybe you've been building something with Lego. Give me a shout or a wave if you've been making something with Lego. It's great. I love Lego, don't you? Lego and Duplo are the best toys. Or maybe you've been playing with Marble Run. Who's got Marble Run at home? Actually, I find Marble Run is quite tricky, isn't it? Because you've got to get everything positioned correctly so that the ball rolls down to the bottom. And that's a good thing to try and build though. Or maybe you've been playing Jenga. Jenga's a great game to play, isn't it, as well? But I always find it a little bit frustrating when you pull the brick out and they all come tumbling down. But um, I've got something here that needs building. I have got a 1,000 piece jigsaw and I just do not know where to start. Look at all these bits here. There's too many bits. They're all different and it's a real muddle. It's just a mess in this bag and it's not actually going to look any good until all the bits are back together as they are in the picture. And it's a little bit like that, um, how it's been at church recently, where we've all been separated from each other for a long time because we haven't been able to run any of our groups. So I'm wondering if some of you are going to be missing coming to kids' church. Maybe you're missing challenge or messy church or coming down to ABC. And you're really looking forward to coming back together again. And that reminds me of a story in the Bible about a man called Nehemiah. And we're going to be looking at um, his story over the next few weeks. So here's a picture of Nehemiah. He had a very important job in the king's palace. And he was one of God's people. And at that time, all of them were living far, far away from their home back in Jerusalem. And here, here's a picture of Jerusalem. And can you see it's a huge city and it's got walls all the way around it. And they all had to go and live in another country. And Nehemiah and the rest of God's people thought that they would never be able to get back to home in Jerusalem. Now, one day, a visitor from Jerusalem came to visit Nehemiah and he had some bad news. He said, oh, Nehemiah, it's awful in Jerusalem now. It's just crumbling. It's in ruins. All the walls are falling down. It's such a mess there. And Nehemiah was really upset when he heard that Jerusalem was falling down. He cried and he prayed to God about it. And later on, the king said that he could go back on the long journey back to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls to make Jerusalem right again. It was a huge, huge job because Jerusalem was such a big city. But Nehemiah knew that God would be with him to do that massive job. But it wasn't just the walls that needed to be built. It was the people that needed help as well. Some of them didn't have a home, some of them were starving, and lots of the businesses had been destroyed as well. But with God's help, Nehemiah did it. He built the walls, he built the community back together again with God's help. So this jigsaw needs to be put back together. And it's the same with our church. All of us are really important. Each one of these pieces is an important part of our church. We're all different, but we're all important, even when we're not together. So I'm sure that you, like me, are really looking forward to the time when, with God's help, we will be all back together again at church. We're going to do a new song now. Like many of you, I'm sure you were very moved by Marianne's testimony a couple of weeks ago. And it occurred to me as well that a lot of things that have happened recently have all been connected to Psalm 91. So I was having a, a look through various hymn books and other sources, and there's actually no real song version of Psalm 91. And I thought, well, we ought to do something about that. So over the last couple of weeks, um, while we've still been in lockdown, I've had, had it on my mind to try and put a tune to bits of Psalm 91. 
So that's what we're going to sing for you now. So it's a new version which I've written of Psalm 91, which we hope that you'll like and we'll be able to join in. You're going to help me sing? prayers this week, we will see several scenes from around our church building to help us reflect and pray. I encourage you to P, pause, R, reflect, A, ask, and Y, yield, to pray. This is taken from the 24-7 prayer movement and their app Lecto365. So if you're in the church building today, you may like to turn and look at the different scenes as they appear on the screen and take in the pictures and their meanings as we pray together. So let's look at the first picture together. Dear Lord, thank you for your goodness and for your beautiful world that you have entrusted to us. We praise you with our voices in our homes and where it's safe to do so. We seek to worship you today and every day in spirit and in truth, with our lives, not just our voices. Lord, we thank you that your mercies are anew every morning, and just as the sun shines through these windows, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for art, for literature, song, dance, music and comedy. 
and the wonderful ways in which we can experience glimpses of you through creativity. We pray that you would help us in this time to find fresh and new expressions to worship you, to praise, to wonder, to wonder at you, Lord, and all your goodness. I pray that in this time that you would help us as we establish new rhythms and habits and that you would be at the centre of those habits and rhythms. Lord, we praise you. Let's move to our second window. This one is on the left in the church and it's connected to the link. It's Jesus calming the storm. Take a moment to reflect. Lord, we pray for all those near to us and far away that find themselves in a storm. Whether it be through illness, unemployment, bereavement or loss, Lord, we pray that they would know and feel your presence with them. Thank you that you are always with us, even when it doesn't feel like it and that you stay with us in the storms and that you are our comforter and our protector. Lord, I pray now for peace and for still waters for all of those in distress. And we take a moment now to remember all of those who are unwell, to hold them in our thoughts and prayers. And Lord, we pray for your healing touch. And Lord, we also pray for peace in our nations. We pray for China and relations around the world. We pray for our worldwide church at this time. We pray for those who are hungry, who are homeless, who are afraid, both here in Chislehurst and around the world. Lord, we pray that those around the world would know your peace, would know your comfort today and every day. Lord, we pray for peace. In the third window, the sheep of the shepherd is just to the right of the church. Thank you, Lord, that you teach us. Jesus taught with parables that his followers would understand. And I pray that we would draw close to you and trust you. Lord, I pray for an increase in our faith. Give us courage to speak out to those around us. Give us courage to trust you in difficult times. We pray now for all of those who are lost and have questions. We call to mind people who are yet to know you that we know. Lord, we thank you for the innovations that technology is enabling, that people can find out more about you online. But Lord, we pray for boldness, that you would give us words to say for people that we meet, who we speak to. Lord, give us words to say, hearts to love those around us, and to speak more of your faithfulness this week. Lord, we pray for opportunities for your gospel to be heard, through us. Lord, we pray for the lost. And now we move to the resurrection window. It's, it's right at the front of church. Lord, we pray for your resurrection power in all that we say and do. 2 Corinthians, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show us that this all-surpassing power is from God, not from us. For he who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. Peter Gazzaro prays this. Lord, everything in me kicks against going to the foot of the cross, where you will root out of me all that is not of you. 
Help me to not fear the deaths that it will take for me to be transformed into a free person who loves you and others well. Have mercy on me, O Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Lord, we pray for mercy. And lastly, we pray for our church, Christ Church Chislehurst. We pray for all of those that serve our church community in so many ways. We pray that the joy of the Lord will be a strength, will be endurance, will bring wholeness. Lord, it is a blessing to be part of your church. And we pray now prayers of protection, prayers of peace, prayers of joy over all our church staff and our volunteers. Lord, we praise and thank you that you never leave us. You are here in our midst today and always, that you call us out onto the water in your resurrection power to serve and to love. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 1. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. In the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanini, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that has survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile now back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins of we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly towards you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people whom you redeem by your great strength and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favour in the presence of this man. I was the cupbearer to the king. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at the book of Nehemiah from the Old Testament. And it's an incredible story, one of my favourites. It's like an adventure story. Reminds me of some of the films I used to watch when I was a boy. Do you remember the story of the Magnificent Seven? a Mexican village that was year after year attacked by bandits and seven men had to come in and help that village to defend themselves and to rebuild what was going on there. Now the story of Nehemiah is not that dissimilar really. Um, years ago, thousands of years ago, the Hebrew people were taken into slavery by the Babylonians. Eventually when they were in exile, the Babylonians were defeated by the king of Persia and he was much more humane and he allowed the uh, Hebrew people to return back to Jerusalem. Now, meanwhile, Nehemiah is cupbearer to the king of Persia, like a chief bodyguard, and he receives news from Jerusalem about what's going on there. And he says to the messenger who's come from that area, What's going on? How are my people getting on in Jerusalem? And the news isn't good. The messenger says, well, the walls are broken down. We're really vulnerable to attack from enemy bandits and invaders. 
from other countries. And Nehemiah is really moved by this. He's really upset. He's sad and he prays and he mourns and he fasts. He wants to do something about this. He wants to go back to Jerusalem and help the people there to rebuild the walls and to be able to defend themselves. Now, I like to think of the character of Nehemiah as being a bit like Chris in The Magnificent Seven, played by Yul Brynner. So bear with me here. Sometimes I like to think of an actor or think of a, just be able to picture a face when I'm reading a story from the Bible. So let's have the story of Nehemiah played by Yul Brynner. Now, Yul Brynner had uh, fantastic, uh, in, in the film as Chris, had leadership skills and uh, it was a great uh, skills with, with guns as well. And Nehemiah, was a great project manager in the book of uh, the, in the, the book that we're reading about, but also he had one particular gift and skill that is really useful to us as well. Nehemiah knew how to pray. He was a man of prayer who trusted God even when things looked doomed to fail. Now, in many ways, we are in a time of rebuilding. Coronavirus has swooped in like an enemy and much of our life, way of life, is in need of repair. Many of us will find it quite daunting when we consider how we're going to move forward, having been so restricted and locked down for so long. And we know we need to be careful. The Covid bandit is still lingering in the, in the background. The first chapter of Nehemiah tells us so much about what we can do when we're faced with an overwhelming situation that we feel called to do something about. So let's have a look at the response of Nehemiah to what was going on in Jerusalem. When he first hears that the walls are broken down and the people of Jerusalem, his people, are in real trouble and in danger, we're told in verse 4, When I heard these things I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And this reminds us that it's quite natural and important for us to express emotion and not suppress our sadness or our anger when something like this is so upsetting us. We may be deeply moved by the plight of people caught up in hardship, in poverty, in war or oppression around the world. It can make us feel angry or it can make us feel sad. I've been watching recent reports from things that may well be going on in northwest China that have been hidden for some years and it makes me feel angry. We need to be careful not to take on the sorrow of every situation we see, that's the danger of having 24-7 news broadcast into our homes or on our phones on a daily basis. It can be overwhelming. But like Nehemiah, there may be one specific project, one specific situation that deeply moves us and we sense a call to action, maybe even just by giving some money or getting involved with the charities connected to it, or maybe there's something else that we can do. But let's not suppress or deny our feelings about what it is that we're upset about. And as well as mourning and weeping, Nehemiah prays. During the first few days, his prayers may well have been prayers of lament, as such as we see in the Psalms. He may have expressed sadness or anger, and all of that, again, is healthy that we express ourselves in prayer to God. But thankfully, at the end of these few days of prayer, we have one significant prayer recorded by Nehemiah in this first chapter. And I don't know about you, but I often find it really difficult to know what to pray or how to pray when I'm faced with different situations, particularly things that seem impossible. But the Bible gives us many examples of prayers that we can learn from. Most importantly, obviously, the Lord's Prayer. And this prayer of Nehemiah's has a lot to teach us. There are actually a lot of parallels between this and the Lord's Prayer. So let's have a look at it, because this is a prayer of hope. Nehemiah is not feeling hopeless. He's sad about the situation, but he trusts that there is something that he can do. It was St Augustine who said that hope has two beautiful daughters, anger and courage. When, when anger or sadness stirs us up to respond, it's courage that leads us into action. So we're going to divide the prayer up into sections, just for a couple of minutes. And the first thing we see in this prayer is praise. Praise. Just like the Lord's Prayer, 
This prayer begins by acknowledging who it is that Nehemiah is praying to and just how special and wonderful he is. So verse 5 says, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and obey his commands. So often it helps to remind ourselves as we begin praying what God is like, creator of all things, powerful and mighty, but also loving and faithful to his promises. By doing this, by beginning our prayer like this, we immediately bring faith into our prayer and a positive, uplifting, thankful attitude. That's a good way to begin praying. Secondly, we find confession. And again, in the Lord's Prayer, we're encouraged to ask for forgiveness. And Nehemiah does the same here. Verse 6 says, I confess the sins that we Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. There isn't any point in hiding our sin from God. He knows it all anyway. And his nature is to forgive us and help us to lead better lives. And if we fail to confess our sin and put things right with God, we may find that there are blockages in our prayer life. We're just not getting through. The third thing that Nehemiah does in his prayer is to remember. To remember. And this may not seem obvious at first. But it's important not to forget what God has done for us in the past. That also builds faith into our prayer, that God can be trusted. And we can say, do you know what? We've been in similar situations to this before and God has come through. God has given us an answer. The clearest example is when we take bread and wine. Jesus told us to remember him. And that he died for us, that his sacrifice was for once and for all, for, for all time. So in verse 8, Nehemiah prays, Remember, Lord, the instruction you gave your servant Moses. If you return to me and obey my commands, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place where I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. And finally, he asks, there's petition. Finally, Nehemiah asks God for help. It's only at this point, at the end of his prayer, that he specifically asks. Verse 11, give your servant success today by granting him favour in the presence of this man, because Nehemiah knows that he's going to have to go to the king, his boss, and say, look, I need your permission to go back to Jerusalem for Nehemiah's mission impossible that he feels called to do. There's so much to learn from this prayer as we look ahead to a rapidly changing situation, the uncertainty of all that's happening at the moment in our nation, as a church, as families, in our workplaces, our community, um, and a situation that may well change again in the coming months. The uncertainty has the effect, hopefully, of teaching us to depend on God more than we ever have done. Just like Nehemiah had to do, he had to trust God. And as we go through the rest of this book, and we'll see this over the next few weeks, it was not a straightforward story. Uh, that's why it's, it's just such a great adventure story that we're going to be looking at. So what is it this morning that really stirs you up, that moves you in the way that Nehemiah was moved? Something perhaps in the community around you, something in the world around you that you see and you're angry or you're sad and you think there must be something I can do. Pray about it. Use Nehemiah's prayer as a starting point. It may be that whatever God's calling you to do, you don't even have to leave your house. It may be that he just wants you to pray about this situation or to give something towards it or to write to somebody or to phone somebody. But whatever it is that God's calling you to do, bring it to God. Use this prayer Ask God to stir up your heart because we are here as God's people today, just like Nehemiah thousands of years ago. We are here to make a difference in this world and share with God in the, in the building of his kingdom.
So as we come to the end of our service, I want to thank you for joining with us this morning, whether you've been in the building or at home or somewhere else. We pray God's blessing on you for the rest of this week. Let's pray as we finish our time of worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have learned from the story of Nehemiah this morning that his prayer was the foundation for what he set out to do. And we ask, Lord God, that we will stay close to you, that we will experience your presence with us, that you will give us wisdom, courage and strength for all that faces us in the coming week. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.